Oh my God. You know, to, to, to say that God does not exist, the part of God, the presence of God does not exist, is actually also to say that the wind does not exist. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. You can see the manifestation of the wind. You can feel the wind. Even though you cannot see the wind with your optical eyes. Am I talking to somebody here? You may not be able to see God with your optical eyes. You can see the manifestation of God. You can feel. Am I talking to somebody here? I pray for somebody here today. You shall see after this service the manifestation of God in your life. And you shall be Begin to enjoy the manifestation of God's power in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of testimonies. There is power in testimonies. If there is anything that the devil is afraid of, it's our testimonies. The devil is afraid of our testimonies. The devil do not want us to testify. I'm not talking to somebody here. That is why even after God has done something, you know, the devil will say, hey, don't testify. I just have to wait and let you be. You are not sure whether I'm not talking to somebody here. He knows that the moment you testify, he is completely defeated. I'm not speaking to somebody. Scripture says from the place we read from, it says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimonies. Nothing conquers the devil like the blood of Jesus and our testimonies. I'm speaking to somebody here. The blood of Jesus has been shed already. There is one thing that is left. It is our testimonies to give the devil a technical defeat, a complete defeat. Tell the person next to you, get ready to testify. If you are not testified, begin to testify. Am I speaking to somebody here? Amen. You testify of two things. When you testify, number one, you testify of what God has done. Number two, you testify of what God can do. There is what God has done and there is what God can do. I'm speaking to somebody here in the book of Daniel chapter 3. If you read from verse 16, the three Hebrew men testified of what God can do. And because they testify of what God can do, they got their victory over their enemies. They got their victory over that situation. They said, we know the God that we serve is able to deliver us from your hands and from the fire. They testified of what God can do. Don't just wait until you have it before you testify. In most cases, you have to testify and then you will have it. And that is what faith is all about. I'm speaking to somebody here. You testify it and you have it at the end of the day. I'm speaking to somebody here. Amen. Just said, I will wait till my change comes. He said it and he saw it. What you say determines what you see. If you can say it, if you can testify about it, you are going to see it at the end of the day. Am I speaking to somebody here? The power of testimony. Testimony is key over a uh, key to victory over our enemies. Testimony is key of victory over any situation. Your testimony is an open defeat to the devil until you testify. You are yet to conquer the devil. Listen to me. It doesn't matter whether God has done it. It doesn't matter whether God is yet to do it. Until you testify, you will not have a seal on what God has done. And you will not see what God is going to do. Tell the person next to you, so begin to testify. I'm speaking to somebody here. Begin to testify. Tell people what God has done. Tell people what God can do. I'm 
am speaking to somebody here. David did not just only testify of what God has done. He also testify of what God can do. He said to them the other day, Lion came and bear came. When I was taking care of my father's sheep, the Lord delivered them into my hands. And I testify yet again. He said, this one will not be an exception. The Lord also is going to deliver this one into my hands. I'm speaking to somebody here. You must learn how to testify of what God has done and what God can do. I'm speaking to somebody. Nothing moves God like when we testify of what he can do. I'm speaking to somebody here. Wow. For your information. There is nothing God cannot do. Jeremiah 32, Jeremiah 32 verse 17 and verse 27. The Bible said there is nothing that is impossible for God to do. 27 says, Behold, I'm the God of all flesh. He says, Is there anything too hard for the Lord to do? Listen to me, child of God. There is no testimony that God cannot not give to you. I'm speaking to somebody some time ago. The people of God, they battled against their enemies and they were by the mountain. I'm talking to somebody here and they thought that the God of Israel is the God of the mountain only. And they said, no, this time let us engage them by the valley. And God proved to them that he is a God of all weather. He's the God of the mountain and the God of the valley. If he can do it by the mountain, he can do it in the valley. I'm speaking to somebody here. The God that did it before, he can do it again. The God that did this small one, he can do the big one. There is nothing too big for God to do. I'm speaking to somebody here. Tell the person next to you, say God can do it and he will do it. I have my dose here. I don't know why some people think that God will not do it for them. Whatever makes you feel that God will not do it for you, my dear, go and Listen, if God has not done it for you, it doesn't mean that he cannot do it for you. Perhaps there are things that need to be fixed in your life. Perhaps it's not time yet. I must speak to somebody here. Because everything is for an appointed time. Including that testimony. Are you here? Amen. In the book of Genesis chapter 18. If you read from verse 14. The Bible says after God through the angel has spoken to Abraham. That your wife is going to conceive at old age. At the age of 80 or 90 rather. That she's going to give that conceive. The Bible says Sarah heard and laughed. And God said why did she laugh? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? It says at the appointed time. He said, I'm going to return to her. And the Bible says, if you read, I believe the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 22 or chapter 21 from verse 1, the Bible said, the Lord did for Sarah as he has said. I'm not speaking to somebody. Give us that Genesis. He says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. In verse 2, this is at age 90. For Sarah conceived and bear Abraham a son, and he's at in his old age. And they said, At the what? At the what? At the what? The set time of which God had spoken to him. There is time. If you have not testified about that particular thing, it is not because God will not do it. It is not because God cannot do it. Probably the time 
is not yet. It is not yet time. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 11, it says it makes all things beautiful. It needs time for somebody here under the sound of my voice. The Lord said, I should say to you, it is your set time. Your set time has come. He says that we arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yeah, the set time has come. God says, I should announce to somebody here, it is your set time of celebration. It is your set time to testify. It is your set time to get married. It is your set time to get a job. It is your set time to be promoted. It is your set time to buy the car. It is your set time to build that house. If you believe that shall I receive and receive and receive Tell that person next to you. Say, my set time has come. Say, this is my set time. And I'm ready to testify. If there is conviction in your spirit, if there is conviction in your heart, you are the one I'm talking to. Receive that same money today. Receive that same money now. Shall I receive, I receive, I receive. Oh, my Jesus.